When people first get into Minecraft, they often have a building goal as their first big project. Sometimes that's a giant mansion, and sometimes it's a giant, well, something a lot less appropriate. But although it's important, not everyone is good at or even enjoys building, and so here are 69 goals from the survival, the exploration, and the progression elements of Minecraft. It's important that you mention not only, wow, the obvious subscriber plug, but also that you need to start small, and the easiest small goal to have is collecting every single type of wood. There are currently nine different woods to collect with their corresponding saplings so you can grow more of them and having access to these is a really good start to a world. Uh, the opposite angle on that would be to say try and get a blue axolotl. It might take you a similar amount of time if you get lucky at least, it's a 1 in 1200 chance, but every single time you breed some axolotls you've got a chance of getting this super rare colour that shows that you have something very rare in your Minecraft world. Along the same veins as trying to get a brown panda, but if you want to go in an entirely different direction how about creating an enchantment room? Not for the aesthetics of it, you might think an enchantment room is just bookshelves and an enchantment table, but a lot of people forget about the anvil and the now grindstone which is required, as well as all of the chests to store the various enchantments which you're going to want to add to all of your tools, uh, especially the ones we're getting into later. But speaking of tools, you might want to get some from a woodland mansion. This is a very rare structure you've probably heard something about, but it's also the only place in Minecraft where diamond blocks spawn naturally. You can come to one of these places, you can get yourself a diamond block and maybe even a totem of undying which will be really useful for the next goal because you need to kill an elder guardian. That's right, it's the lowest level boss in Minecraft, it's so debatable as to whether it even counts as a boss, but they only spawn into your world once and they'll always give you this mining fatigue effect. So go into an ocean monument and kill one of these monsters and you can get your hands on some gold blocks as well as some sponges, some of the weirdest, nichiest but really coolest items that I think Minecraft has. While you're at it, you might enjoy in the ocean trying to collect every single tropical fish. This is one of those goals that is very very hard to achieve because although there are only 22 named variants of the fish, once you include all of the colour variants there are 2,700 types of tropical fish that spawn naturally which will take you a long time but it will make a hell of an aquarium and speaking of aquariums you might want to do the opposite of one. You know how an aquarium effectively takes an area filled with air and replaces it with water? Well try and do the opposite using sponges because you can drain a river, an ocean monument or even even an entire ocean, if you're crazy like me, and this allows you to walk around a area that was previously untamable using just your oxygen. This is pretty cool for the ocean monument in particular, but you can use it in any underwater area, such as a hidden underwater base. I think this is one of the best uses for it, and it will allow you to hide from the outside world and give you some protection, just like how you can get protection from hunger by getting a trident and putting the channeling enchantment on. This allows you to summon lightning strikes by throwing your trident, which allows you to make overworld piglets charged creepers, or even the infamous brown mushroom. The brown mushroom can be fed all sorts of flowers to get all sorts of suspicious stew effects, but this includes the best food source in Minecraft because if you feed them dandelions you get saturation stew and you should get this nice and early in your game so you can always have the best form of protection from hunger. If you want the best form of protection from mobs, maybe instead you should collect every mob head. This is a really interesting challenge by itself, but also if you wear a mob's head and then go near that mob, it has half the detection range on you because it assumes that you're just a creeper or a zombie or a wither skeleton until you get much closer to it. This is a useful challenge, but in case you think all of the challenges are collectathons or about weird niche features, how about instead you kill an illager patrol, this will allow you to start a raid if you take it to a nearby village, and this is a really fun mini boss fight with 3 to 7 waves depending on difficulty. I actually recommend setting the difficulty to hard because although mobs will do more damage to you, you will be able to get more totems than dying. It's also an opportunity to get more loot and once you finish the raid, whether it's three or seven waves, you'll get the hero of the village effect. Use this to get slightly cheaper trades and help you out when it comes to maxing out some villagers. I enjoy doing this so much because you've got to trade through the villager lairs and as you're doing so, the villager externally gets better and better with this thing on the outside of him going to emerald and then eventually diamond to show that he is a level five villager and can trade some of the most useful items in Minecraft depending on what profession he has. It is a fun thing to do and it's also a great way to interact with the villagers because remember the default goal of Minecraft is to kill the ender dragon and effectively what you're doing by killing the dragon is saving all of these guys. So you're saving them from multiple threats here, you're such a great person, but yeah the dragon is the big end boss of Minecraft. At some point you should get this done, I recommend sooner rather than later in your world if you haven't already. However the real goal if it's a long term world should actually be to respawn the dragon using some end crystals and then fight the dragon 19 more times. 
times. This seems insane, but the end result is you'll get every single one of these end gateways spawned into your world. This is the real point at which you say the dragon is dead, and although you can respawn her after this point, there are no more rewards besides experience. And so this is the point at which you've really beaten the ender dragon because you've gotten everything she has to offer. I think it's an incredible point, and it's also a jumping off point to explore your end islands. This means getting two very important forms of loot. One is shulker boxes, and the other is enchanted diamond armor, which spawns by the bucket load in these end city chests. These are the best loot chests in the game, and so getting out here and exploring them is going to be a really good goal for your world. If you like the idea of getting super high end loot, but you want to do something a bit more rare and niche and fun than just looking for this very obvious structure, then maybe instead you should find a fossil. These are only found below deserts and swamps, and there are 1 in 64 spawn per chunk. However, you don't know where in that chunk they are. There's a lot of archaeological excavation required to find one of these, and so I think it's really great to take these bone blocks and potential diamonds and actually bring it back with you to your home. Or you could make a museum, which is what I've personally done. There's lots of fun ideas, but take your bone blocks, bring a fossil up to the surface, and you won't regret it. And it's also a fun way to commemorate something fun that you found, just like how alleys are a really helpful mob that you can find in pillager outposts or the Willem Mansion. You need to liberate some alleys just because they're so cute when they're dancing. You need that in your world. Speaking of cute, have you ever seen every cat together in Minecraft? You might not have, and you might not know that there are 12 separate variants, and since they only spawn around villages, it can be a really fun task to try and get these 12 cats to be tamed and following you around. In fact, they're one of the easiest animals to move because they do just follow you with no issues asked whatsoever. They're just as reliable as a dog, except they sometimes sit on your furnace, and having all 12 varieties would make you a crazy cat lady in the real world, but in Minecraft, you can live your crazy cat collection dreams with no issues whatsoever. Once you have that many cats, you should have all the motivation you need to get full diamond or neverite gear. This means not just your tools, but also uh, your armor as well. Everything that you want to have maxed out should be neverite, and everything that you don't mind being a level below that should be diamond. I recommend going full neverite here, that's the highest end version of this goal, but if you insist on having blue things, that's totally fine, but you might regret it when it comes to enchanting, because neverite is slightly more enchantable than diamond, and so this is when you should fully enchant your tools, and ideally have it be fully enchanted neverite. Once you have maxed enchanted armor, so that means unbreaking, mending on everything, that means the highest level enchantment that you want in every single category, then you can say you've got the best armor and tool set ready in Minecraft for some of the big projects you might want to attempt, whether they're building or whether they're more challenge oriented, because here's another fun one, don't just get the maxed enchanted stuff that you can get while using an enchantment table and villagers, how about go and get all of the treasure enchantments? You can only get swift sneak inside of an ancient city, you can only get soul speed inside of a bastion, or by trading with a piglin, but you know they're mostly found in bastions so it counts, so why not go out and find these treasure enchantments so you can say you found the best treasure that Minecraft has to offer, and even then put it on your gear. It's possible before attempting something this big and going to two of Minecraft's scariest places, you might want to get a respawn compass just in preparation of the worst. This is obviously uh, requiring you to go to an ancient city, but this is one of the most useful things that you can place at your spawn area, so when you die, you know exactly where to head to stop your stuff from despawning. Just, uh, I would also recommend while you're here, maybe make a second set of diamond or enchanted neverite armor if you want to go crazy. Make a second set of armor and put it at spawn. This could be for you, it could be for a friend, it's entirely up to you. Something else that's up to you is whether you tame this guy. Look how cute the Strider's face is. Don't you want this in your life? Not only is he cute, but also he'll help you ride around the never. Although you could just ride around in circles and you'd enjoy it still. Uh, you could also make a pathway and then make a gang of them so you always have a way around. I mean, they're just too cute. You know what else is cute? Making a never hub to all of the important points in your world. At this level of exploration, you probably have a few different places that are quite far apart by walking, horses, or maybe even flying, and so the never hub is the fastest way around your world, especially if you combine the walking, the flying, or the striders to get around it. I really can't understate just how important the never hub is, and once you've done this, maybe you've secured it, you've even made it an inside room, you could use this an opportunity to explore more of your never to see where you could expand to in the future. So you should visit every single never biome. I think it's really useful just so you know for the future where the resources are, but they're also really interesting places. There's some of the more varied biomes you can get in Minecraft, and you know what? There's two types of trees here, so you should do it for that reason alone. If you really want to max out your never exploration scorecard though, you need to visit every single bastion remnant type. This is one of the biggest structures 
features in Minecraft, and they made not just one, but four separate variants of it, which I think is kind of crazy. Each of the four variants has something different to offer, and one of them even has a magma cube spawner, which is very, very useful. So you want to find each of those four, especially the magma cube spawner, the only uh, magma spawner of its type in the entire Minecraft game. Uh, also, while you're in the nether anyway, kill some wither skeletons and fight the wither. This is Minecraft's biggest boss. You've gone through the previous three. This is the big one that once you kill it will allow you to do some really cool things. In particular, you'll be able to craft a beacon and something that is on the same level of difficulty is getting fully enchanted gear. You, you might have heard me say earlier, craft fully enchanted gear. I mean fully enchanted gear. Everything should be neverite and maxed out. And also you should put unbreaking on mending on everything that accepts it. Shields, shears, the flint and steel. And there's, I've got a whole video if you want to know the 23 items that will accept it because I found it to be one of the most fun and rewarding goals personally. And maybe you will as well. Just like how you might enjoy crafting a full beacon. That's right, not just the beacon block itself, but all of the resource blocks that go under it, the mineral blocks they're called. This requires 1700 iron, gold, or emeralds, or if you're going really crazy, diamonds or neverite. This is one of the big grinds you're going to have to go through at some point, and the reward is really great because haste does allow you to mine blocks faster, or you can have regeneration, or you can have jumping speed. All of these different effects are possible if you just get 1700 of a mineral resource. Uh, if you want to go a very different direction after spending so long mining, maybe you'll enjoy trying to tame or trap every single friendly animal. Obviously, there's the easy ones, the cows, the pigs, the sheep, the chickens, but then there's, and then there's the tameable ones, the dogs, the cats, but then trying to get every single other animal and putting them in one place is a great way to make a zoo or something horrific or cruel, which, whichever way you want to see it, I think it's very fun. Just like how I think it's very fun to try and bring frogs to the never. I, I lied about that. Last time I tried to do this, my frogs were hanging in a boat underneath my ice. It was a very disastrous situation, but trying to get frog lights is a really hard thing to do, but it's really rewarding when you get one of the best blocks in Minecraft. So try and get any number of frog lights, maybe even one of each type if you want to. It is hard, but it is rewarding. If you want all of that reward without any of that hard though, try and create a farm for every crop instead. They're the easiest and most satisfying farms to make in my opinion. You just need water, a hoe, and then you plant the seed and you wait for them to grow. In fact, carrots and potatoes don't even have seeds. You just plant the crops themselves. Um, and yeah, getting each of these four major crops are really satisfying because every time you harvest them, you get more seeds to make more crops, to get more seeds, to make more crops. And it grows and grows and grows and grows. And it's a really satisfying way to spend some time in Minecraft knowing you're boosting your resource count and maybe even getting some emeralds by when you trade them with the villagers. It also doubles as a source of food. But if you want a crueler source of food, try the exact same thing by making an auto mob food smelter. This is a real thing. You can do it with chickens, which I find is the cruelest because they hatch and then when they grow up into adults, they die and get smelted. You know, there's lots of ways you can make an auto mob smelter, but at the very least, you should have a fire aspect sword or some campfires near your animal encampments because you can do with some cooked food at this point. It's the minimum you deserve, especially after all the things you've done so far. Let's be honest, this video is meant for out of chronological order, but I like the idea that someone's killed the wither, they've got full neverite gear, and just now are they realizing, oh, I should get some food. If that is you though, make some automatic mob killing. Or uh, if that is you, maybe something you've neglected so far is finding a buried treasure chest. And I understand why you have to go swimming in an ocean. Who wants to do that? Well, maybe you with your fully enchanted helmet can now go underwater and breathe for longer. If not, maybe you should make some potions, but either way you should go underwater and try and find a buried treasure chest map. Now follow the map and it will allow you to explore some more parts of your world and find one of these chests which was hidden under there the entire time. Another fun goal is to find a thousand of a rare-ish item. I, I, I think to put in this category, you could say sponges, spore blossoms, or skulk sensors, but any rare-ish item that would be hard to find and that only comes in a few dozen at a time, getting a thousand off it is a big accomplishment and also allows you to do some really cool, quirky, strange, if we're being honest, things. And if you didn't love strange and quirky things, then you wouldn't be watching my YouTube channel. Or if you are, thank you. Also, thank you for subscribing. Do I get a few seconds in the middle of this to say that for myself? I might not, because I instead have to talk about flowers. You know how many flowers there are in Minecraft? So many. If you want to collect every flower, I think it's a very fun uh, way to make sure that you have every dye type you could want, as well as every decoration type you could want, and you can make a much more varied garden for your little house. Obviously, that's a building goal. So instead, collect the flowers for the dye. You might need it for all the blocks that are coming later, just like how you might want to try and collect every hostile mob. This is a 
big step up from collecting every flower, but collecting every hostile mob is possible and you can put them in your same mob zoo. You know what, this is a fun zoo collecting here. What you could also do is collect every music disc. This involves exploration to places like the Never or Strongholds, but it also involves killing a lot of creepers using skeletons. It's a kind of fun task, I enjoy doing it. I've enjoyed doing it in quite a few worlds since. It is a very fun goal to have and so collect all the discs because your parrots will appreciate it and you should have parrots by now, just like how you could collect every potion. This is also surprisingly hard. You think there's only 13 of them, but by the time you add splash and lingering and all the variants, you have a huge wall of potions. Okay, I have a huge wall of potions. Do you like my museum here? Uh, but what you might also want to do at this point is make your beacon, you know, this fully leveled out beacon into a mega beacon. The mega beacon is the true show of success and wealth in Minecraft because you need to kill the wither six separate times and then you need to get all the resources to make the pyramid much wider. It is much harder to do, but it is so satisfying having every single Minecraft effect apply on you at once. What you could also do is try and get every single librarian trade, every single profession at this point, because although maxing out some villagers is fun, trying to max out every single villager type so you can get every single trade will allow you to on demand turn any of these emeralds into basically any of the high-end items, which is really incredible because that does include some pretty decent foods like the golden carrot. You know what else you could do at this point? You could map your entire world out. I love looking at my mega map. It is just so satisfying to see. And although you don't need to make a 15 by 15 map, that's 225 maps, you can do something much smaller scale and you'll still be able to appreciate what your Minecraft world looks like. And you'll be able to see what it looks like when you punch the map and then you update it and it looks entirely different. I think it's fun personally, just like, like how you might think it's fun to visit every single biome in the game and try and take blocks from each. Once you've mapped out the world, you'll know a decent idea of where 90% of the biomes are. Try and take some of the biome specific blocks from every biome. So obviously that's the trees or the flowers, but also that can include the red sand from a mesa biome, the only place where it spawns naturally, or the skulk from the deep dark, or even the mycelium from the mushroom biome. It's a weird purple block and don't you kind of want it? Yes, you kind of do. Can't be crafted any other way. Just like how you can never go back to the simple days at the start of Minecraft where you had no stuff and you started from scratch and the world was your playground. A lot of people like starting new worlds because they really like that early game of Minecraft, but instead of starting a brand new world, how about put all of your stuff into chests and then go really far away, a couple thousand blocks away minimum, uh, from your stuff and then start again in your existing world. I did this in my Let's Play world and it was actually quite a fun adventure. Might do it again sometime. I think it is a really fun way to get that new world experience without having to sacrifice everything that you've done so far. Just like how you can enjoy what you've done so far by visiting the build height, that's 320 blocks, to get a new perspective on your world. I actually recommend if you're playing Bedrock with its cubic render distance, that you go a little bit lower down so you can actually enjoy the views, but go as high as you can and make a really nice viewpoint so you can appreciate the things that take you hours and hours to build and obtain. And uh, I honestly, I think it's one of the most important things you can do. Just like how it's important to make a note block song that can play automatically, this is actually a really fun task. It's kind of technical, you can maybe even argue that it's building in some way, but I really like making note block songs and they're really hard to do. You have to look at a song chart and I'm not musically minded or talented, but I found it fun. Just like how I find it fun to destroy all of the area above my end portal room. This gives you easy access to the end portal, which is one of the few ways you can just instantly teleport. It's an amazing thing to do and it makes the game a little bit easier and it's also kind of a cool project just to accidentally slip and fall into your end portal. Okay, is that just me. Speaking of things you might accidentally do, trading for 1,000 emeralds. 1,000 is a big milestone for lots of things, so try and get 1,000 emeralds. I think it's kind of fun, just like how if you enjoyed mining above your end portal room, you like the functionality of that, you might enjoy mining an entire chunk. Rather than mining exclusively for the gain of resources, which you might have done a lot of if you've made the mega beacon, uh, you might enjoy just mining an entire chunk, and it's actually quite a cool way to see visually how Minecraft works, where the ores generate, etc. But also, it can be a fun challenge. There's even a world record for this. The world record right now uses moss, bone meal, and hose to just destroy it as quick as they can. If you want to do this yourself, maybe you'd enjoy that. Just like how you might enjoy having a full backup set of enchanted neverite armor. That's right, not any armor. Have the best set of armor, just like you have right now, in case you die. You don't need to have everything besides, I'd say, a sword, a shield, and then the full armor. But if you're going somewhere dangerous, dangerous enough that you die, when you go there to collect your stuff, you might just benefit from some fully enchanted gear. Who knows? Maybe find out yourself. Uh, also, what you can find out yourself is a whole lot of enchanted golden apples. These are one of the 
rarest treasures in Minecraft, and they are only found via this treasure. They give you a massive benefit when eaten. I don't need to tell you about that. However, because they're so rare, it might be fun to keep some of these on you, partially as a flex, but partially as a way to avoid dying in lava, because eating one of these will give you fire resistance, as, re as well as regular resistance, as well as everything else that it gives you. These things are amazing, and as a backup, they could be pretty good. If you want to be a little bit easier about this, a little bit less risky, make some regular golden apples, but enchanted golden apples or golden apples are two great goals to have if you want a lot of them. It can also be a fun scavenger hunt or a little side project, which is the whole point of this video. Wow, have you noticed, just like how you might have noticed that redstone is something that I struggle with, but making a redstone collector device is a really fun thing to do. An automatic sorter can be really useful. Even just a redstone collector that can destroy items for you is really, really handy, and you should consider trying to make one of these. Just like how you should consider making your fortress optimal for wither spawns, remove all of the walls, and then there'll be more blocks on which wither skeletons can spawn. The way that wither skeletons spawn is very confusing, but the simple of it is that they spawn in never fortresses, and you're gonna need to kill a lot of them, uh, especially for things like completing all of the achievements. Wow, that is a hard uh, task to do. Minecraft has over a hundred achievements on the bedrock conditions, and countless more on the Java ones. Let's not even get started on how do we get here, but it's a really fun achievement to go for trying to get all of the achievements. I think that makes perfect sense, just like how it makes perfect sense to try and get the fastest horse. What is that doing down here? You might say, this is a really easy thing to do. You just keep finding horses till you get the fastest. No, what you need to do is you need to make a horse speed checker and you need to keep racing your horses until you find the two fastest horses you have. Then you breed those two horses together. You check their results versus the baby. If the baby is faster, then you breed him with one of the horses and you keep inbreeding the horses till you get faster and faster and faster horses till you max out the theoretical speed and you have the fastest horse that Minecraft has to offer. Even in creative, this isn't easy. And it's one of those things I've always wanted to do, but it's just so darn hard, just like how it's so darn hard to kill a warden. There's not even a good reason to kill this guy. He's not a boss, he's just a very strong, you know, like defensive mob. You could say he is the warden of this biome, uh, but if you can kill a warden, then you know you've officially made it. Just like how, if you want to really make it, you can take this deep, dark city, and you can make it not so deep and not so dark by bringing some light to the darkest place in the game, mining above it entirely. You can do this using the wither if you want to, if you're fighting him anyway, uh, but you can do this using anything else to make this place a lot lighter and a lot nicer. Just like how you could make your chest room uh, nicer and lighter by building a whole new structure. I love making a chest house from chests. Uh, but what you can also do is you could try and make this into a challenge. Try to fill as many chests as you can fully to the max with full stacks of items and try and have as many different chests filled 100% with different items. It's very easy to do this cobblestone, stone, deep slate and dirt, etc. But trying to do this with glass or prismarine or mossy cobblestone bricks, uh, those are a little bit more challenging and then you get to the very hardest ones, the ones that are going to be near impossible but are still fun to aim towards, of diamond or emerald ore or ancient debris. There are lots of challenging blocks in Minecraft to get 1,726 off and see how many you can fill because this chest room can be your completion room. Just like how you might want to have a wither killing room because you're going to be killing a lot of withers to make a lot of beacons in your uh, entire Minecraft world. I mean six to make a mega beacon, but what if you want more mega beacons? Also, if you're going to be making uh, a lot of mega beacons, you might want to prepare a lot of your world and make it safe by making a 192 by 192 area around your base where there are no mobs spawning whatsoever. You can do this with torches, you can do this with red, uh, redstone lamps if you want to be able to turn it on and off, but I love the idea of having a fully lit up area so that you know no mobs will spawn anywhere near where you do your sleeping. Another really silly challenging one to do is trying to trap a warden. This is not just trapping a hostile mob because he does despawn if he's not always doing something, so you need him to be actively chasing after some form of mob or a rabbit or something. This is such a ridiculous challenge to do and then you can just say, yeah I took the hardest mob in Minecraft, I didn't just kill him, I, I, I emasculated him, I removed his sense of purpose because now he, just, he spends his whole day uh, running around doing nothing. Maybe that's fun. Maybe it's fun to you to have a bunch of iron golems defending your base just in case those torches fail. It's always an overkill thing to do, but at some point Minecraft is about overkill. It's about showing what you've got, even when you really don't need to show what you've got, and I absolutely love that. I also love the idea of collecting every single block and item the game has to offer. Every single block is somewhat easy, there's only a couple hundred of them. Every single item is really challenging, because where do you draw 
the line. Do you need every single enchanted book? Do you need every single sub potion variant like I've got? Um, this is something you can decide endlessly on, but whatever you decide, trying to collect every single one of these is a really fun way to adventure across your entire Minecraft world. It's also really fun because beacons have a fixed radius. It's about 20 to 50 blocks wide, depending on the level of the beacon, but because they only last for 50 blocks, you can't uh, make all of your world covered in beacons, but what if you could? Because they have a fixed radius, you could theoretically cover the entire world that you use, you know, maybe a thousand by thousand area, with enough of these. It would take a lot of beacons, which would take a lot of wither killing, but this is the way that you show that Minecraft's most challenging item that takes so long to get one off, you have so many that you can flex and have them everywhere. You can also show, by crafting fireworks of every type, that you have the ability to celebrate anything you want, and you can make a really cool fireworks show with just the press of a button. It's technically redstone, but it's much more showing your arts and craft capabilities, or maybe the wastefulness at which you can use creeper heads, because the best explosion comes from the creeper head firework. Let's not lie to ourselves. Like we should not lie to ourselves and say, okay, if you're flexing with beacons all across your world anyway, maybe you should try having at least one maxed out neverite mega beacon. This would take 40 to 100 hours of tedious mining, of just mining through for ancient debris. You need a lot of explosions if we're being honest. However, what a flex it would be, and it would be uh, an amazing one too, and uh, honestly, that's the reason that it has been done a few times, and that's how we know it takes so many dozens of hours, and so if you want it, then you're a little bit crazy, but in the good way. And so I would say the only thing crazier than making a maxed out Neverite beacon would be perhaps, you could say, making maxed out Neverite beacons covering your entire usable world so that you're never that far away from a maxed out Neverite beacon. Uh, but a more serious one is that a lot of games have this goal of having a million of a certain currency. Even in the real world, we hear the term millionaire and it's like, ooh, wow, that's, that's money, right? And so a lot of games have million coins being their big marking point where you've officially crossed the barrier into something else. And so since 2013, Minecraft has had currency, and if you wanted to be a millionaire, you could use this currency and become the god of trading. If you wanted to have a million emeralds, which would make you a Minecraft millionaire, you would need this many chests full of emerald blocks. Not just emerald, emerald blocks. It is so much storage for so many emeralds, but if you had a million, you could officially say you've completed the Minecraft million air challenge and is that not enough? Okay, it might not be enough, but I hope that you've all enjoyed this video anyway. It took a lot of time to put this together, so I would really appreciate a subscribe if you enjoyed it enough to make it to the end. Thank you for watching because I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.